Good evening, my friends. This is VJ Franz K. It looks like you've got yourself a Korg micro sampler sampling keyboard. Now, the thing that I like the most about a sampler is that you can put any type of sound in the entire world into it. And if you ever get bored, just reload it with new samples. Now, as you can hear, this machine comes with samples built in to get you started. But that is only the beginning of what you can do. There are more sample packs for download on the web from Korg's website and others. Some of them are free, some of them you buy. But the real fun of owning a sampler is loading it up with your own sounds. And I am going to show you a new idea for doing that tonight. So here's a pretty cool beat. And look, I've made it on our old friend, the iElectribe R. I would like to sample this onto the micro sampler. But how am I going to do that? Well, I could use the audio out cable and plug it into the audio in of the micro sampler. But I would like to show you an easier way or a, a clearer way to do it using the USB cable connection of the micro sampler. I've made myself another building block. I called it blocky because it kind of sounds like uh, wooden blocks or something. So what we can do in our browser, I'm going to export and bounce the pattern once again. So now it's saved as a WAV file that we can import into the micro sampler. Here is another strange sound that I have made using the flanger and the closed hi-hat. And I'm going to export that using bounce pattern as well. While we're at it, using the iPad, let's make a stop to IMS-20. And we can get some great synthesizer notes. What do you say? Now I'll go in and fine tune it. I'm making myself a nice simple sonic building block that I can use to do more complicated things once I load it onto the micro sampler. All right, I have a nice note completed. It sounds like it's saying, why, why, why? That's kind of fun. In order to export my sounds from IMS-20, I'm going to have to use a little different method. I'm going up to the global button, and now I'm going down to bounce pattern. And now this is saved as YYY pattern one. Again, I will bounce the pattern using global bounce pattern. Now I've got my laptop and my sync cable. So let's connect. After I have completed syncing my iPad to the computer, I should select the apps panel here. Then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and you'll see file sharing. There are many apps that allow you to share your files with the computer. So I'm going to open up iElectribe right now. I've made a special folder for this purpose and now I will drag them straight across from this window to the folder. This copies them off of the device and onto my hard drive, which is where I want them now. Now I will drag over my IMS-20 documents in the very same way. Now in my folder I have five WAV files that I have made in iElectribe R and IMS-20. So now let's bring them in. Just to be safe, make sure your micro sampler is off when you connect your USB cable. Then connect the other end to your computer. It can be Mac or PC. Turn on. Now I have opened up a new window for the micro sampler editor librarian. I'm going to select File, New. Now 
you notice we have an empty keyboard ready to receive the samples. So I'm going to start by putting my sample right here. I will open up my micro sampler reload project and I'm going to put on my beat scatter shot. Remember when we made that? I can drag it into position on the keyboard. Because this is obviously a loop, I'm going to select Time Stretch. Now I'm going to drag one of my synth loops, YYY, and I'll put it in I'll put it in on this key. I'll also select Time Stretch. I will keep doing this for all my other samples. I'm going to make sure that the audio in effects are on, because I like to sing or vocalize with a lot of my music. So I will turn on the effects. In the effect area, I'm going to select the effect type. Let's see, what shall I use for my voice? Modulation delay. And then I can set the various parameters right here very easily. Now that I have everything ready, I'm going to save as, which will save my bank. Also, by double clicking here, I can change the name that will be displayed on the micro sampler screen. With my micro sampler, I'm going to hold the edit button and then press bank change. Over here it's this key. Then I can select which bank I want to switch to. I'm going to shift to bank F for Franz. Then I'll press enter. Are you sure? Yes. And we have changed to the bank. And now under communication menu I will select Transmit to Current Bank. This will update data on the micro sampler. That's exactly what we want to do. So we will click OK. And it's transmitting the samples that we made. This is what the transfer to the micro sampler looks like on this side. The screen says receiving data and slowly it will fill up with the samples that I have sent. We've done it. There's one more step to do. Press the write button to write the bank. You can see the dots going across. And now we have it saved in the memory. And here's the part that makes it all worthwhile trying out the new samples. I'm going to press down my vocal sample in and then press the loop hold button so I don't have to hold it. Should we do it like this? Cause the beat is fresh. Why? Should we do it like this? Because the beat is fresh. There's all sorts of different ways that you can mess with your samples that you would never have thought of before. Try turning them backwards, adding effects, changing the effect settings. Now switching from sample mode to keyboard mode, I can play my various samples. With interesting things, playing a beat on the keyboard produces strange effects.
It's amazing the different ways you can transform one sample into other types of sounds. BJ Franz K is signing out for now. But I'll be back again soon with more tutorials, interesting new ideas for you to try with the synthesizers that you have, but you may have not realized that you had. Inventiveness is the key to everything.